Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an impressionist realist painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosnan of Steve Brosnan's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde J.K.L. I'm the host of this podcast, I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, botanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrative paint in watercolor, tin and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. Well, hello, and welcome to another episode of the Artist Friends Podcast. My name is Clyde J. Kale. It is Monday, June the 21st. This is episode 102. And I'm here with my best artist friend, Constance. Diane is not here tonight, folks, because there are some serious storms going up in in the, the Maryland area, her part of the country. So she just... Can't get on the internet to uh, join us tonight. So um, it's just going to be me and Constance. And hello, Constance. Hi, Clyde. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us or listening to us. Yep. It'd just be, it'd probably be a little bit shorter, shorter podcast than uh, normal because I don't know how much more uh, want to bore you too much. Of course, Constance, <laughs> we get talking about all kinds of other things if we're not careful. But tonight's focus, if you go to www.talkartpodcast.com, that's talkartpodcast.com, you'll see some recommended videos, some wisdom from Gary V. little short uh, videos there. And then the last one was uh, artist problems with our favorite nutcase, Mikey. He says, uh, five tips for improving your creativity. We'll end up talking about that. I know uh, Constance, she's already smiling. She likes Mikey. Yeah. <laughs> Mike's funny. He cra- he cra- <laughs> up. For the theme for this week was basically the end of our conversation last week when after the podcast, after we had uh, closed the podcast, of course, we were just chattering. And Diane brought some things up. She's been trying to uh, produce some videos and have a of her painting and of course she uh has issues with uh, her trying to use iphones and they shut off sometimes and then and we were just discussing all these little technical glitches at the same time both of them were hammering me because they kept saying that i kept cutting out when i was talking so i had to edit the the audio version of that podcast quite a bit this last week because when i listened to it I saw what they were talking about. It brought me up the in the, the thinking of, um, okay, as part of this artist career, we have to use technology. There's no way we can avoid it. We have to be on social media. We have to be on the Internet. We have, Things are not going to work like they're supposed to. Things are going to goof up. The internet is going to drop on you. The, the quality is not, sound quality is not going to be good. Like, I apologize. I am so thankful to our listeners that 
continue to listen to us because sometimes our audio, audio quality of these podcasts is not the best. And, of course, I don't know about Diana Constance, but I certainly do not consider myself to be a professional broadcaster. <laughs> I, am, I am just a guy who knows just, has just enough knowledge to know how to use audio equipment and, and recording and editing to be dangerous. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> me too. <laughs> but keeping in line with what Gary says, I'm doing it. I'm not worried about, well, you know, you can't, uh, you can't do this and, uh, you know, you're not trained there and, uh, well, you don't sound that good. And, and then, so you end up listening to those negativities and you end up not doing anything. Right. Is that right? Do it. That's how that saying goes. Just do it. Yeah, just do it. <laughs> right. You know? The same way, you know, as uh, with our creating of our arts, you know, and everything. And I think this really goes toward uh, the uh, younger folks. And um, um, if you sit around and you wait until you've got the money to buy the, the fantastic paint set, or if you wait until you have the money or the good job to buy all the fancy video and uh audio type editing equipment, you're not going to make any progress. You're going to be sitting, you're going to be waiting a very long time. And so uh, the point being in the process of getting on the internet, on social media and making videos and make or making, uh, you know, specifically creating podcasts, I mean, you are learning because you're going to, regardless if you had the best equipment in the world, the most expensive equipment in the world, you're still going to have technical issues. But you still have to learn how to present yourself. You have to learn how to uh, edit things and put things together. And that comes with practice. The same way with your art. If you sit back and you wait till you got all the right material and the good and the, the good professional material, you're not going to make any progress. So go into Walmart, buy those cheap paints. If that's all you can afford and start creating something. And it's a learning, learning process. Um, just before we started, Constance happened to mention a quote that she had heard somewhere, I guess from Gary V. Constance, you want to uh, explain that quote, you know, give, give us, share that quote with us. Um, it's, he says, well, if you poo on yourself, you need to carve that out of yourself, out of your brain. If, because it's parrot, parroting like the bird that you heard from somewhere. Um, somebody else's voice is, is, and it says, I am an ecosystem of my family or friends somewhere along in your life that has built up an insecurity in yourself that you need to get rid of because that's not how you were originally designed. And so you need to get that out of your system because you were not designed to feel bad about yourself or, um, so yeah, you need to say good things about yourself and just get on with it. Yeah, I had. Uh, uh, I can use the words that he used because he uses bad language. <laughs> no, like saying it's bad language. All right. Yeah. He uses what I call sailor talk or New Jersey. Yes, he does. He's very, he's very flamboyant about his language. <laughs> it is, it's like he says, he don't care. He don't. Yeah. Care. Well, he cares. He just that's just how he talks. Yeah. His point is if he. Uh, uses that language to uh to wake people up yeah well he does a good job get your, get your attention i i think that's why we uh uh follow gary v for uh you know uh, a lot a lot of his advice he gets people he gets people's attention you know he gets people's attention but the the thing is in a nutshell you know somewhere along the line somebody has taught you that you're not efficient you know in in that has gotten ingrained in your brain somewhere along the line. Somebody has made you feel insecure and that's, it's not true. 
you are secure. God made you to be secure, isn't it? And uh, you just need to carve it out of your brain and get rid of it. Yeah, absolutely. And with the, uh, you know, technical glitches and, and technical difficulties, and, and uh, that's another example of don't let it stop you. You know, overcome it and keep on going. And Make I, another one. I think- <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I've told this story partially before. I run an internet radio station, and I play the uh, nostalgic uh, vintage radio plays uh, from the 1930s, 40s, and 50s. Now, when I start, I've been doing this stage for 21 years now. Hard to believe. This is my 21st year. <laughs> and um, I have... When I tell people this, they raise an eyebrow because they don't believe me, but I've got stats to back it up. I have well over a million listeners every day from around the world that log on and listen to this, to these programs. It didn't start that way. It certainly didn't start that way. I had, when I started it, I didn't even have, didn't even have uh, high speed internet access. I had to upload the programs to a server with a dial-up modem. You know, the old kind that goes, ching, 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 makes a noise. <laughs> like AOL noises used to make. You have to dial up and then turn over to AOL. Remember, when you lived way out in the country, you would have to, to connect to the Internet and then connect to AOL to get onto the Netscape and all that stuff. It was really funny. It would take almost two hours for just a handful of programs to upload, you know, these MP3 files, you know. But when I started, started the reason why I started it was uh, when I was in the Navy and living overseas, uh, the local mil- military station would play, would replay these old programs. And they were so enjoyable. And then I was surfing on the Internet and I accidentally came across some. I said, oh, my God, these things are still available. You know, and I actually found, uh, you know, a couple Internet radio stations that were just starting that played them. And then there was this service called, it used to be called Live 365. It offered free. It said you could, you know, for no cost whatsoever, you could start your own Internet radio station. And my whole intention was to upload the programs and put them in rotation, my favorite programs, so that I can listen to it and a few of my friends. And I, I'll never forget the one time, I, the first time I looked at the stat, I had 50 people from all around the world listening to, to my material. And I was just so excited. You know, I said, wow, this is cool. <laughs> yeah, other people like this stuff. I'm not weird. I'm, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. And then, you know, things progressed. And, uh, and then, uh, you know, later on, I, I started developing, you know, more listeners. And, and uh, I went through a period of where I would do live shows for a while. And, and uh, even though I never went to broadcast school, I never went to Internet school. I, ne- you know, I just kind of fumbled along and uh, just kind of made do with the best I could, you know. And uh, later on. Uh, when it started to cost, when they changed the rules and everything, and I also I had to get different servers because I was getting more, I was exceeding the capacity of my listeners, then I had to pay. Well, then it, I didn't even, it wasn't until like 2006, 2007 before I set up a thing where I could request, where I started requesting donations, you know, because I kept it, and to this day, it's still free. Anybody can log on and listen to free, but, uh, you know, I appreciate, you know, donations. And then they slowly started coming in. And so now I've built up. So this venture was not a money-making venture from the beginning. It was just a hobby, sharing, you know, sharing my love and my passion of old-time radio. And it really came into play during this last year, during COVID. There was so many people who sent me emails that they were so thankful because they were stuck in their homes and my listenership 
went up. I mean, because people were, you know, they, they couldn't go to work. So they were listening instead of only listening five or six hours a day or two hours a day, they were listening 24 hours a day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. People got really bored at home. <laughs> so it's pretty boring. And, you know, but at the same time, I had some uh, employment issues. And for about two or three months there, Constance, remember this, I was really scared. I didn't know how yeah. to rent. I didn't, I mean, and I sent a, you know, I was, I opened up to my listeners and I explained to them, I said, I don't know if the station's going to last. I don't know if I'm going to, you know, cause, and I asked for donations and the love that came in was incredible. And those people helped me get by. They helped me get by. But my point of telling this story is this all started from me not knowing a single thing about radio broadcasting or internet bro- radio stations or any, and just wanting to do it and staying with it and sticking with it and improving. I started somewhere. Yeah. It is now, I would say, uh, it's hard to tell because the stats are dyna- dynamic, but I would say I'm probably about the one of the second most listened to internet radio stations on the internet. You know, that's pretty cool. In fact, yeah, you know, 30 million some listeners a day, over 30 million listeners a, 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 a month, rather, a million a day. And uh, it, you know, it's just incredible. And I still, you know, donations uh, sometimes and that server cost was unbelievable. They went way up. <laughs> but to accommodate that many listeners, you know, because I'm, I'm located, I'm on. Now that we have, you know, when, when, the phones, iPhones and, and Android phones, you know, so people can listen to me off from their phones and there's internet devices and I'm listening to multiple directories and I'm even on a Lexus. I'm on Google home. I mean, <laughs> it's there. Mystery play internet radio or creation <laughs> M P I R it's everywhere. But my point of telling the story is that, um, if you have, the love in your heart, if you have the desire, and if you are persistent, you can do it, which is why I have complete 100% confidence in my art career because I did, I'm doing the same thing as my art career, what I did with my internet radio station. And, in fact, I, I'm using the internet radio station to help promote my art career a little bit. And, and there's glitches. There's still technical glitches. I still get, you know, uh, sometimes I get a listener, you know, I have problems listening. And I try to help them figure out why, you know, the music is out of my, it's completely out of my hands, you know. Uh, there's still glitches with, uh, you know, with the, with the art career, with the painting, you know, and, and you have to learn to tech, you know, especially if you're getting your art out there and you're entering in contests and, and you're setting a website that you have to, no, like I remember the first time I told Constance that I said, now you may, when we were getting our exhibition ready, I said, now make sure that your images are 200 DPI. And she about glazed over. <laughs> <laughs> your eyes glazed over. What? <laughs> yeah, my eyes glazed over a lot. I've been having a lot of trouble with my migraines. <laughs> so Constance, I, I've been talking all along. Tell me what, <laughs> what, uh, you have any, any kind of a vulnerability story you want to share with uh, with our listeners that they can maybe help them overcome, you know, uh, to motivate them or something? Or I know I'm putting you on the spot. You are putting me on the spot. <laughs> I know you have a tendency. You're not real technical. Or you're constantly talking about uh, websites. You know, you know different different webs. You know websites. How do you how do you overcome from that that handicap? So I use Etsy for the jewelry, and then I use Daily Paintworks for the the artwork. Um, I've kind of been out of the game since last September because I've been having a lot of migraines for the last nine months. Um, but I've got to try to get back in the studio and work. Um, sometimes I'll work on a site, and then if I have a really hard time with it, I just have to let it go with that site. You know, but some sites are very easy for me to work with, and I understand their platform really, really easy, and I, it's not hard for me to figure it out. I just have to go and work on a site and see if it's easy for me to work with. If it's not, then I just have to go find something that's easy for me to work with. Um, I've been with Etsy for a long time now, 
and I just have it's easy to you know to work once you figure out their their format and you know how to deal with it then it's if it's easy you can yeah. I mean I tried with Etsy I tried to use their um advertising but what happens in you is you end up using you can spend a lot of money that way and it eats up eats up your um income that you get from it okay i just don't do it you know so with the uh the daily paintworks i i need to work on that site more but i like uh fine art america that's an easier one to work with too and then art pal they advertise a lot for you yeah you know? i guess the point the 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 point that you're making, and you can tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, you just, when you started encounter, encountering difficulty, you just didn't throw your hands up and say, okay, that's it. You no, you just, you just have to kind of work through it and see if you can figure it out. You know, sometimes some sites are a little harder than other sites and see if you can figure out how to work it, you know. And, and if you can't figure it out, then you, you get something different. Right, because there's a lot of sites, different sites for selling your exactly. artwork and your jewelry on. And then you just have to figure out what sites work better for you, you know. I remember earlier in a year, maybe it was a year ago, whatever, you were really, you know, about FASO, the FASO sites. Yeah, yeah, I did. And I did them for about a year, but I had a hard time trying to figure them out. And I could never really figure out how to, to make them work for me really well so i just decided to let them go for now yeah. you know maybe later on i'll go back to them but for now i just but you did but... i had too many eggs in my basket and i had to throw some of the eggs out <laughs> and there were one that was you know i just had to back off from one or two yeah. so and that my you know my point is that you then you you discovered uh you found daily paint works and that right worked out easier for you in fact because of you, I, I'm I'm on Daily Paintworks. Yeah, there to me that's a very easy site to set up on. I mean, it's just easy, you know. It's got it's got its little quirks here and there, but for the most part, it's very very easy. Yeah, and yeah, that's, the, very that's well, what I like. It's easy. Very well, <laughs> you know, throughout the internet, you know, I, I mean, I get a lot of hits on it, and uh, the whole point of having a website. And you have to, as a working artist, you have to have a, a website. You have some place to show your work. Yeah. And so uh, you can't just be on, just w rely on Instagram and Facebook. No, you. Right. Then too, but you have to, you know, be. Right. Well, this Instagram and Facebook, Facebook are social networks. I mean, you need to be on them too. But I mean, as far as a place to sell your work, to show your work with price tags and stuff on them. Uh, um, daily paint works is a good place to be yeah i think yeah. you know it's fairly you know, you know fairly easy so uh these uh uh the 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 theme or the the motivation of this is don't give up if you encounter a brick wall then figure out how to climb over that brick wall or climb under it or right. around it yeah well i mean i i Stayed on FASO for a year and a half or two years before I decided to, to not be on there. I mean, it's not like I didn't give them a good old college try. I did. <laughs> I just decided that it was just I'm not ready for them or I just decided to back off for a while and, and do just, you know, do, do my other stuff for a while. And I may go back after a while and do it again, but for now, I'm just not doing it. I remember me. Uh, had conversations you were you know trying to figure out because because diane is on fashion, so you were yeah she is she likes fast though but yeah, i don't know i just decided against it it's not a case of of uh i want the listeners to realize this is not a case of well i'm not smart enough or that what is difficult it depends on how your brain works what is right for this person it is it's going to be extremely easy for the next person and right by, and vice versa that's just the way it is. Right. I mean, everybody's brain works differently. Uh, it, it really does. I mean, it, what might be easy for one person might be a, a piece, you know, maybe really. And for me, it's just not as easy to work on there as it is. Now, Diane, Diane loves it. She, you know, she thinks it's 
really easy to do, but I find it more difficult. It just, and so it just depends on the person really, you know, I mean, I'm not a Twitter person. I'm on Twitter, but I'll go and tweet a lot because <laughs> I just can't figure it out. You know, everybody's different. I like Facebook. I like Instagram I post there. I haven't posted a lot lately, but you know, I've been dealing with a lot of migraines. So I have not been able to, you know, do a lot of anything lately, you know, other than just sit in the bed and try to figure out how to not have migraines. <laughs> I'm hoping I'm going to get that under control later. <laughs> but anyway, so. To, to wrap that, that this discussion up, um, you just got to keep at it. Don't, yeah. You're... Yeah, just keep at it. I mean, give something a, a good old college try before you decide against it. I mean, you know, for two years, I I tried it so and I decided, well, I'll give it, I'll, I'll try again later at some point. But right now, I'm going to uh, scale back on some stuff. So that's one of the things I decided to scale back on. Yep. You're going to have glitches. You know, every, everywhere you go. Yeah. Now, right before we conclude this podcast, let's talk about Mikey, our comedian. <laughs> let's go. Oh, I almost made con- uh, uh, choke up on her water. She was drinking. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Mikey's so funny. <laughs> his, uh, his five tips for, what is it, for improving your creativity. Yeah. Part of his problem was five tips for to boost your crea- creativity. <laughs> so what was your, fa- of the five tips, what was your favorite? I'm, I'm sure. trying to think. Write that down. <laughs> yeah, I'll write all five of them down. <laughs> you know I am. <laughs> I did like that, those little mas- ma- miso racks. Is that how you say it? Miso racks that he had on there? Those are cute, but. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, you know, they, they sell them, but it was nice to organize. I'm. I don't know if I'm that. If I'm that organized, yeah. You know? Hey, you know what I use for my paint brushes when I'm painting? You know those big old styrofoam blocks that you get in when something's packed. I put those styrofoam blocks on my little thing, and I put the brushes in there, in the, <laughs> so they have little. <laughs> so I sort of have something like he's got, except for those styrofoam blocks from the packing. <laughs> yep. Yeah. If it works, hey, you know. Hey. It's... But yeah. I think he's funny. He talks about he talks about his children getting icky. He hands them over to somebody else. It's funny. <laughs> oh gosh! Right? Yeah. Write down your ideas and your thoughts. That's pretty cool. Yeah. You know, and uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I'll give you a good example of uh, uh, you know I'm enrolled in this Kelly Folsom's course. You know, and every month she does a uh, what's called a uh, a live Q and a session where, you know, people can, uh, uh, write in the students can write in their questions about different things. And mm-hmm. then near the end of this last Q and a, uh, she got on a monologue. She got up, got real close to the camera and said, stop thinking, start painting. <laughs> I was, yeah. a period. I was going through a period of where I was, thinking about all the wonderful paintings I was going to do, but I wasn't doing anything. (laughs) Yeah. And it was just like, it was just like she was talking to me. Like she was saying, Clyde, get up and start painting. (laughs) Yeah. And I think, and, and, uh, Mikey's tips when he talks about, you know, write down to boost your creativity, you know, just don't, don't spend a whole lot of time thinking about just, just start doing it, you know? Yeah. I still like that that Nike commercial, just do it. <laughs> like, yeah, that's what the whole theme of, of this episode is, you know, it's... just do it. <laughs> yeah. I need to come over here to the studio and just do it. About it. Yeah. I've just, I've just been in a serious funk over these migraines and I need to try day. to get over here and just do it. You know, <laughs> it's hard. How many times have we heard? I would love to have an art career someday. You are so lucky. No. Uh, I set out to do this uh, five years ago, and I proceeded. And I'm, I, I, I'm an, I'm an artist. I'm a working artist. I remember when I started out. You know, we was enrolled in Paul Klein's course. That's when you know when we met. And mm-hmm. uh, uh, before that, I was ca- always calling myself an emerging artist, but I never called myself an artist. And during the, the course, during one of the sessions, you know. 
Paul hammered her. He said, no, you're an artist. You're an artist. Just start acting like it. Start thinking about it. Start being an artist. So I went out and got some business cards made up. And now when I go get my hair cut or if I go somewhere, someone says, what do you do for a living? Oh, I'm an artist. I just real casual before I was always kind of hesitant about it. Not now. No, I'm not. No, I'm an artist. You know, the first thing out of my mouth, well, I've never heard of you. Well, I'm, uh, you know, I, just because you never heard of it, heard of me doesn't mean I'm not an artist. <laughs> well, I said, if you do, if you Google my name and uh, on uh, on Google, then you see where you you're, uh, you see what I'm doing, and it is. Type in my name on Google, and it comes up as an artist. Yeah, you know, shows my artwork. You know, but this didn't happen overnight. This took a while. It took persistence. It took yeah. So for our listeners who are sitting on the couch and saying, "I want to be an artist someday." Uh, how about now? <laughs> yeah. Let's yeah. Ju- just do it. Let's do it now. Okay. You've been listening to the Artist Friends Podcast, episode 102, with Clyde J. Kale as your host, and my best artist friend, Constance Bronson, and uh, Diane, missing in action. Of course, we can't blame her. Poor girl. She's suffering under under thunderstorms and lightning storms probably don't have any power she's probably sitting in the dark now poor thing oh, <laughs> we'll find out afterwards i'm sure we'll be you'll be in contact via email yeah, afterwards but anyhow thank you so much for listening thank you diane for keeping me oh, i'm so used to saying diane thank you constance <laughs> i got the name right thank you for keeping me company and for sticking around because it's kind of what only two of us, it's kind of hard to have a conversation here. I end up talking the most. I'm sorry. <laughs> I got a word in edgewise. Don't worry. <laughs> All right. Good night, Constance. Good night, Clyde. Good night, everybody. Thanks for listening. Thank you so much for listening, folks. And we'll see you next week. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. Constance Bronson at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C-B-R-O-S-N-A-N-S. Clyde J. Kale at www.cjkaleartworks.com. If you would like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. If you enjoy these podcasts, please give us a thumbs up or star rating. And most of all, send us your comments. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons license.